anti-evaporation is your priority. That's the main strategy. And um, shade is one way. So increasing shade is uh, very important and also increasing wind buffering. So shade will extend the water through reducing evaporation. So will wind buffering reduce evaporation and also increasing organic matter. Now, all of that can be done with hardy legume trees. Now, unfortunately, a lot of them are often spiky if you're dealing with really hard ground. So you're looking for hardy legume trees going on. They may cycle through. You may go from hardy spiky legume trees through to more friendly, not so spiky legume trees later. You might cycle through to long term legumes. So tree legumes that give you shade, they're easier to grow because they fix their own nitrogen. And then deep rooted fruit trees in the forest in amongst these, you must increase the shade. So, but they'll also incre increase organic matter and give you the wind buffering. So you get all three at once. Now you can over plant the tree legumes to start with and increase have more shade, more wind buffering, and more organic matter production while you build the sandy soil up. Where you've got caliche, you may have to actually smash your way through it. You may have to get down there and pickaxe through it and actually plant in the broken up holes because caliche is usually a layer. It's called caliche or kangao. It's almost like old coral reef, it looks like, or like you say, natural, um, natural concrete. Um, you smash your way through it. You could use a jackhammer sometimes if you want, or even a machine. And you put your plant in whole plant over the caliche. You can even do pits if you like. Now you will actually garden if it's not salty. You can garden down in the ground. So your, your garden is usually shaded, 50% shade over the top, above, 30% shade on the east, 75% shade on the west, and even 20% shade on the sun side. You don't have to shade the shade side because it's already shaded. It can be annual vines going up vertical trellis on the sun side. It can be deciduous vines on the east side and over the top. And you want actually, um, you want evergreen vines on the western side. The western sun's the killer. The western sun after the heat of the day is the one that really dries things out. You don't want any windows on the western side of the house. You want it covered with evergreen vines or evergreen trees. When you look from the west, looking east, you shouldn't be able to see the house or the village in, in a hot, arid location. Now you've got to sink water away from the sun. So swales and gabions that build silt fields become sponges of water and also hard surface runoff. So your roof and any hard surface becomes potentially a limonia effect. A limonia is like an ephemeral pond that soaks in like a swale pond, or if they're big enough, an ephemeral lake. So they, a shallow lake that soaks in, they're not meant to hold water, they're meant to soak it in like a big swale pond. You can also put swale furniture in, you can put deep holes in your swale, fill them full of mulch, and they become sinks of water. You're continuously trying to sink it away from the sun. Those are your primary strategies. Um, shade is, is, is one of the major, um, major strategies. So your, your crop fields, if you're going into crop fields and main crops, they're not very wide. Um, ideally on contour and narrow, so you've got some shading effect. In really harsh deserts with even less rainfall than yours, like the Middle East, where you get six inches of rain or even down to three inches of rain with very high temperatures, um, we go down to less than 20 meters on the crop field and, and more than 50% of the landscape, up to 70% 70, 70 of the landscape in trees to get that stability. And it works fine, but it's not what industrial agriculture usually does which is you know, massive open fields and pump, over pumping water and salting landscape. If you get it wrong, you salt the landscape. You get it right, you end up in one of the healthiest landscapes where you have very high nutrition, very high nutritional food out of well-designed deserts and dry lands.